there hope you're doing just fine my name is Gerald and today I will show you everything you need to know about the liquify tool in Photoshop so stay tuned the most important tip before you start using the liquify tool is to always convert your image into a smart object so duplicate the main background by pressing ctrl plus J then right click on your new layer and click convert to smart object so to open the liquify tool click on filter and select liquify so this is how the liquify window looks like so before we proceed we need to know the definition of the liquify tool according to Photoshop the liquify tool is a tool that allows us to distort pixels in a given image without losing quality so let's proceed now if you look at the left panel you can see all the available liquify tools and when you look at the right panel you can see the properties now the first tip I'll give you here to reset the properties press and hold the alt key on your keyboard click on reset or if you want to reset to default to the Photoshop default you can click and hold the control key and click default so you can see all these options have been set to default so let's go ahead and pick our first tool the first tool is called the forward warp tool and it has a shortcut of W what it does is that it pushes the pixels of an image forward as you drag in so under the properties you can see size when you adjust the slider of the size you will be increasing the size of the brush but you can also use the square bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the brush so let's take a look at what the forward warp tool does you can zoom in by pressing alt while you roll your mouse wheel then you can hold the space bar and you move it around so let's test our forward warp tool use the square brackets to reduce the size so what this does when you you drag around it pushes the the pixels in as you can see it's pushing the pixels in then back to the properties when you look at the pressure here the pressure is at 100 but what the pressure slider does is that it increases the force of the the brush like in real life pressure is a force exerted on an object by something so in this case our object is the image of this lady and the something we are talking about is the brush so when you increase the pressure it means the force applied while you, you nudge in is big so if you decrease the pressure you can see if you decrease the pressure the force that is applied is little let's decrease it all the way down so you can see it's almost invisible because the pressure is the pressure applied is very little then the density slider controls how dense the brush is so let's increase the pressure all the way up and we decrease the, the density slider all the way down then when you nudge the brush in you can see the effect when the, the, the density slider is down so let's undo this and increase the density to around 50 and let's nudge it in again you can see the effect so let's go ahead and we increase the density to 100 and we nudge it in so you can see how the density affects the brush so let me undo this then another property here is the stylus pressure but this applies to only those who are using tablets but if you are using a mouse it won't be active as you can see mine is not active because I'm using a mouse then we also have pin edges so what this does it pins the edges of your image for example right now it's not pinned let's try to to nudge in the, the edges you can see the edges are affected so let me undo it when you check pin edges the edges are pinned so whatever changes you make it will never affect the edges of the image 
Then there is one other property we forgot and that is the rate. As you can see the rate is not activated because it does not apply on the forward warp tool. So we shall look at it when we are looking at the rest of the tools. So let's go to our next tool and that one is called the reconstruct tool. So what this tool does, it reconstructs the changes that you made. For example, let's first increase the size of the brush using the bracket keys. We made some changes here. If we brush using the reconstruct tool, you can see it's restoring the changes that we made. So this is where the rate applies. As you can see the rate, the rate is, is activated. So if you increase the rate all the way to 100, you can see it does it real quick. But if you decrease the rate, let's say to zero, when you are trying to reconstruct, it does it slowly. The reconstruct tool comes very handy in case scenarios where you make like many changes on the image, but you want to undo a specific part of the chain. For example, let's go back to our forward warp tool. So if we had adjusted something here, then maybe here, then somewhere here, then from nowhere you look at the face and you, you say, oh, this is horrible. I need to reconstruct only the, only the face. So in this scenario, of course, you cannot undo because when you undo, it will affect all the other changes. So this is the part where you go to the reconstruct tool, increase the rate to a value of your choice. Then you just brush around that area. So you can see we have reverted the changes we made only on the face. So that is the importance of the reconstruct tool. To restore all the changes you have made, just come down here and click restore all. Then our next tool is the smooth tool and it has a shortcut E. And what the smooth tool does is that it makes the edges of your adjustment smooth. For example, let's zoom in the eyes so let's say I had used the forward warp tool to make some adjustments on the eyes maybe around here let me decrease the pressure so what the smooth tool does if you pick your smooth tool so you can decrease the rate and let me decrease the size of the brush so when you brush that area, tries to, to make it smooth, tries to straighten those lines which are imperfect. So this brings us to our next tool. So let's first restore all and double click on the hand tool to fit to screen. So the next tool is the twirl tool and it, ha it has a shortcut C. So what the twirl tool does it rotates the pixels of your image clockwise. So let me show you that. Let's increase the size of our brush. So when you click, it rotates the pixels clockwise. Or when you drag, it also rotates the pixels clockwise. Oh, this looks weird. <laughs> but if you want to twirl anti-clockwise, hold the Alt key while you click, then it will twirl anti-clockwise. This looks horrible. Let's restore. And while using the twirl tool, the rate is also very important here. So for example, if I decrease the rate, and let me try to twirl this area, you can see the change is very minimal. But if I increase the rate, and I try to twirl maybe this area, you can see it does it real quick. Let's go ahead and we restore all as we look at the next tool. And our next tool is called the Packer tool. It has a shortcut of S. Yeah, and what the Packer tool does, let's first zoom in a bit. What the Packer tool does is that it makes things smaller. In other words, it moves pixels towards the brush area. For example, if I click, you can see it's making the eyes smaller. So that's the use of the Packer tool. You can increase or decrease the rate as you do it. 
Yeah, something like that. And this brings us to the next tool, which is called the blot tool, and it has a shortcut of B. So what the blot tool does, it's actually the opposite of the packer tool. The blot tool makes things bigger. For example, if you click, you can see it's doing exactly the opposite of, of the packer tool. So it's used for making things bigger. Then our next tool is called the push left tool. It has a shortcut of letter O. And this tool is rarely used by the way. I don't think people even use this tool. But what it does, when you brush to the right, it moves the pixels of the image up. When you brush to the left, it moves the pixels of the image down. When you brush downwards, it moves the pixels of the image to the right. And when you brush upwards, it moves the pixels of the image to the left. So let's restore all. So let's click OK because I want to use another image for the rest of the tools because this one is getting pretty boring. So before we, we open the next image, you can see the advantage of using smart filter like we have been making changes on this so if you want to do corrections or if you want to undo like some change you just double click on the liquify so in double click it opens everything back so whatever changes you had made it remains there so you can go and undo the changes you can go and continue from where you stopped so let's click ok uh, this is the image that I want to use for the remaining tools. So let's duplicate it as we discussed earlier. Press Ctrl plus J. Then turn the layer into a smart object. Then go to filter and click on liquify. Yeah, so we have our lady here. She has some nice looking eyes by the way. I hope you can also see that. Um, the next tool is called the freeze mask tool and it has a shortcut of F. So what the freeze mask tool does is that it prevents a selected area of the image pixels from being affected. For example, let me increase the size. If I, uh, let's say, I want to make some adjustments on the face, but I don't want the hair to be affected. So I can select that part which I don't want to be affected. So it freezes whatever is under that mask. So let me go to the forward warp tool, increase the size. So maybe I'm trying to make some adjustments here. So what is under the freeze mask will never be affected. And the next tool is called the thaw mask and it has a shortcut of D. And the thaw mask is like, it's just like the eraser of the freeze mask. So if you use the thaw mask to brush, it removes the freeze mask. So as you can see, this area that we had frozen was not affected at all. Yeah. So let's go ahead and restore this. Then our next tool is called the face tool. It has a shortcut of A, and this is one of the most interesting tools in the liquify. So as you can see, Photoshop has managed to detect the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the chin, the entire face has been detected. So if you come to the properties panel here, under face aware liquify, you will see face number one. So maybe if the image had like two people, you would see face number two. So you can adjust every single part of the face individually. For example, let's go to the eyes. So click this arrow opens the property of the eyes so when you start seeing eye size you have the left and the right so the left represents the left eye the right represents the right eye so let's say we adjust the size of the eye let's say we make it smaller in fact let me zoom in so that we can see it clearly so let's increase the size of the eyes you can see isn't it funny <laughs> or you can link them by clicking this so now they are linked 
So even if you adjust only this one slider, it, it will make changes to both eyes. So this is for making the eyes bigger or smaller. Then the next one is the eye height. So when you adjust this slider, you can see the height of the eyes increased. If you link them, all the eyes will be increasing. Then we have the eye width. Let's link them again. So this adjusts how wide the eyes are. Then eye tilt, just as it sounds, it tilts the eyes. So let's say this left eye was not well tilted. You can tilt it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Or you can link them and you tilt them together. Then the eye distance. This is the distance between the two eyes. So if you decrease, you can see what is happening. So this is really nice. So let's go to the nose. So when you go to the nose, you can see nose height. If you decrease it or increase it, you can see what is going on there. Then the width of the nose, maybe if someone had a bigger nose, you can go ahead and decrease the size. Or if someone had a very tiny nose, you can go ahead and increase the size. Yeah, it has to be your choice. Then you can also go to the mouth. If the person is sad, you can make her smile a bit. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, actually, this smile is too much. Yeah, something like this. Then you can adjust the lips individually. You can see the upper lip. Let's say you want to make it a bit bigger or smaller. The lower lip. Then the width of the, the mouth. You can decrease. Then the height of the mouth. You can increase or decrease. Yeah. Then lastly, the face shape. You can find maybe someone has a big forehead, then you can decrease. Or someone has a small one, you can increase. So you can see what is going on. You can also adjust the height of the chin. So you can see. Then the jawline, decrease, increase. Then the width of the, the entire face. So you can see this is really interesting. So let's jump to our next tool, which is the hand tool. Yeah, what the hand tool does is simple. It's just for moving the image around. Yeah, and finally the zoom tool. By the way, for the hand tool, if you double click on it, it fits the image to the screen. Then the next tool is the zoom tool. And the zoom tool is definitely for zooming. Zooming in or zooming out. If you press alt it zooms out or let's say you wanted to zoom just the lips you can click and you you draw a box and you release then it will zoom that particular area so that is all you needed to know about the tools and by the way if you are enjoying the video don't forget to subscribe it will mean the world to me now at this point i want us to start using real life examples so stay tuned Our example is going to be about changing body shapes. Now there are scenarios where you have a plain background like this one. So if you're going to change body shapes when you have a plain background like this one, it's really simple. Yeah, it's really simple because the liquify effects does not affect plain backgrounds. So let's just look at that example quickly. Uh, I've, I've already duplicated the layer and I've already converted it to a smart object. So let's just go to our liquify so select your forward warp tool pressure decrease the pressure to around 50 percent density to around 43 or 50 so we are going to to add some curves to this image so let's just start and the trick of using these brushes of the liquify when you're adjusting something Make sure the size of the brush is slightly bigger than the area you want to adjust. And when you're adjusting, don't just make a, a big adjustment like this at once. 
do it gradually do it slowly like this as you see the changes yeah something like this so as you can see we are adjusting but the background is not being affected just the shadow is being affected which is okay because we have adjusted the curves but of course the shadow also needs to be adjusted so that is not an issue maybe if we needed a tiny waist we can reduce the size of the brush and we just make a slight change here then you can get your smooth tool and you decrease the rate and you just brush here a bit to make it smooth so this is it click ok so if i turn this off you can see the before and the after so if you want a more detailed tutorial on changing body shapes of an image that has a complicated background then stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit that like button see you in the next video